We're going to start this podcast with a shot. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't expect anything different. Yeah, well. All right, what is this? Oof, this is Scottish whiskey. If you can't pronounce it. What, are you turning it because we're not sponsored by them? Yeah, fuck them. If you can't read it. All right, buddy. Ooh, that burns the nose. Uh, it's still burning the nose. I got I got to chase it with the same thing. Lovely. <laughs> <laughs> I think we're live. Are we live, Greg? We are live. All right, so we're live, and uh, there's a new studio Man, with a uh, special table here for guests because we got a lot of guests coming in. But right now, during the quarantine, we don't have a lot of guests. So ending soon. What's who's the guest today then? Me. Well, you, mm. technically. You're the host. Technically, yes. Um, first of all, good to see you. It's mm. been a while. It's been a while, yeah. So we've been in quarantine, and then I did this uh, this quarantine series, 13 episodes, and I've came to the conclusion that I don't want to be in quarantine anymore. Yeah. And I don't think it's uh, it's the way to beat this thing right now. Just live your lives. Yeah. So we, we uh, actually, I want to make sure you don't have COVID, though. Can you hold your breath for 20 seconds and then not cough? No. I got to do a test just to make it. It's like the... We're just going to run this for good 20 enough. seconds? I think, okay, I yeah. think you're good enough. Did you feel like you were going to cough? <coughs> do what? Did you feel like you were going to cough? Okay, so you're good. So good. We don't have COVID. And, uh, but we were. Like I said, the reason I wasn't here for some of those is because the government literally blocked. We couldn't see each other. Yeah. And so. Uh, it, it's different when you choose not to see each other, which we've done plenty of times in the last 25 years. Yeah. Um, it's also different when the government of Thailand separates districts and blocks roads and you actually physically literally yeah. can't go to each other's barricaded. house. No. And you're seven minutes from my flat. Mm-hmm. So, uh, so since the studio's in my house and you're in your house, can't really do a podcast. Um, so you're like, uh, why don't we do a podcast? Well, since we don't have any guests, you're like, yeah. why don't we do a podcast with me and grill me? And since, well, you, see, I noticed since was... you've known me for 25 years, maybe you can show these, these young kids, or give them some information about me that maybe they well, don't know. That's what it is because uh, – I mean, you did a phenomenal job while I was gone. Thank you. I don't know how many viewers we lost, but we gained a few. So yeah. I figure if we do this, uh, kind of a getting to know the host of this show, mm. you know, see how it goes. So depends on how much we get to know me, I guess. But you know, I've compiled a couple of questions. Mm. A lot of them are, uh, a lot of them are, are mainly ones that like I get about, you know, because I do come in contact with you as well as other UFC fighters. So a lot of them are questions about kind of behind the scenes stuff that. I don't have the answer to, so that's why I figured I'd ask you. Okay. I mean, it's it's not, hey, what is your record, Mike? That's what Google's for. Well, and you know? you've been around me for 25 years yeah. through all my fights, gym building. High school. Prom. Putting on fight promotions. I pretty much everything I've done for 25 years. So and you highlighted your hair? Yeah. There was that. Do you remember we skipped school and highlighted our hair? Mm-hmm. Do you, remember, do you really remember that? It was so bad I shaved it off. That's what happened? Yeah. Oh. I, it looked so bad I shaved it off. I haven't had hair since. You look good now. You carry well. Yeah, thanks. I cover so, with a hat, uh, an American hat. Is there any way we can get a picture of you with your hair highlighted? Maybe. I've got some. I won't post. Not of me, but that's what, yeah. We didn't take pictures of each other when we were growing up. You know, yeah, we that, did. Well, we did, but it was like, yeah, they get them developed. Well, yeah. So we didn't, you know. Yeah, and we so weren't going to do it. I had pictures of my ha- hair highlighted in 2000 in Thailand on my trip to Thailand with David. And it was 99, Ooh. 2000. It better have been. No. It yeah. better have been like 97 because that's... No. Did we have it as seniors? It was, no, 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 it was 2000. It was 2000, 2001, 2002, I was in Thailand. And I decided to highlight my hair blonde. I went full blonde. Yeah. Wow. It was something. Yeah. Well, too bad I missed that trip. It sounds fun. Luckily, a lot of people did. So, uh, yeah. So, so yeah, the floor, the floor is yours, buddy. You're the host tonight and uh, in the new studio. I'm going to do, like I said, a lot of questions are going to be based on stuff you can't just Google. Well, let's just talk. Well, I know. Well, just, I'm just going to uh, try to set up the preference because you don't know these questions. I don't questions. want an interview. Just well, see. I know. I'm just letting you know. And uh, since we have known each other so long, I know a couple things about you, some quirks. Hmm. And uh, I don't know. I mean, like <laughs> I said, well, That sounds scary. The way these podcasts, or back when I was here, used to start is, you know, a lot of question back and forth, and we just lose track of what we're talking about mm-hmm. and just go off. So I do want to cover... Some questions that have, I know, like I said, I've been asked about you or about the UFC. So, okay. One of the ones I get a lot is um, the we ultimate. Have, we have a few drinks today because yeah, 
I know I'm going to get grilled, and I know this is I know where this is going. So I'm going to. Well, gonna, no, we're going to be nice. I'm going to get very comfortable. It's going to turn ugly, probably, because mm -hmm. I'm going to need more than this at some point. So. Well, we have plenty. Um, what I get a lot is obviously Ultimate Fighter season one. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I. I assume, Taking the kids back to the old days. Well, yeah, that's what I mean. To the like, most important show that ever. Chronologically. Built ever. a sport. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, is that considered a reality show? I'll take my credit word when I can. Yeah. You're a reality star. Mm -hmm. But no, a lot of people, because <laughs> yeah, I, I was curious too. I mean, obviously, every I assume every fighter on there had a job. Mm -hmm. So do you tell your job, hey, I'm quitting for two and a half months. Mm -hmm. Can I come back and work? Or Yeah, you just take off. You just, you just. Yeah. All right. We didn't have that much confidence. Where were you working then? I was doing pressure washing on sidewalks. I was a, a bar back bartender, security guy at a local club. And I even helped out painting houses sometimes. Ugh. Yeah, I had like three jobs. And I was training full time and not sleeping and almost in the UFC at that point. So that's pretty much the last time you worked for somebody then, huh? Yeah. Did yeah, you know, to, to be the last person that, aside from like Dana, you know, like people, the UFC, that's been the last people I've had to report to and like actually have bosses, you know what I mean? Like since then I've been with AK Dylan obviously and been my own boss, but you know, the UFC is different. You're still kind of an independent contractor, so it's not like you have a boss breathing down your throat yeah. all the time and I had a good relationship with Dana. But for my last actual bosses, yeah, it was pretty, uh, well, I was my own boss as a pressure washer, but... Uh, at the vaults, the vault was the name of one of the clubs in San Jose. Never been there. And uh, and, then, and then when I was painting houses and stuff, I had like a boss, and it wasn't a nice thing. I didn't like it. I knew right then that I for sure was going to do enough face punching to get me out of that predicament. So you don't like having a boss? I don't like having a boss. No. Do you think I do? You, you <laughs> probably don't. No. You know who my Especially boss since is? It's me. Yeah. yeah. I think you have the best boss. I can't believe you haven't fired me yet. I have. Did you tell me? From the kitchen. Well, no, because that was running so smoothly. You had to use my talents oh. elsewhere. I transferred you. Yeah, that's not a firing I'm talking about. Well, I mean, to anyone else it would have been a firing, but for you, you just got transferred like 20 times. And a pay raise. So <laughs> please don't fire me again. <laughs> yeah. Well, like, Okay, so being on that show, you've got to pay your bills at home and all this mm -hmm. stuff. Do you get paid? Like, is it a 500 bucks a week. That's it? We got paid 500 oh, bucks a week to, to take the sport to the mainstream. Wow. Yeah, that's how much yeah. it, that was how much we I got paid. Five hundred bucks a week, and uh, and that was enough to pay. I was living as cheap as possible in San Jose, which you know San Jose is an expensive ass city, crazy expensive. So, you know, we had all these fighters. That's why we had to work like so much. We had all these fighters moving in from all these different parts. That were like, I was coming from Texas, where it's cheap, you know, or moving in the Silicon Valley, where it's like all tech companies and like you know they're making all this money, and we're just fighting, so we're not making any money and. That's where the gym was. That's what we had to do. We had to grind. We had to work all day, train, sleep like four hours, and then do it again. You, uh, you shared an apartment with John Fitch? Fitch, right? yeah. I was roommates with Fitch for a while, him and his dog. His dog was so big, it was like having a third roommate. Oh, fun. Yeah. Uh, Who's a better roommate, me or him? We, we were roommates longer and in Thailand. What the hell does that matter? Well, I mean, it's, it's a lot different in Thailand. I used to cook for you. <laughs> <laughs> I was a good housewife. Well, that kind of hurts. You brought food home from the restaurant that we own. I would cook sometimes. All right. All right. Anyway. Now I'll say you if that makes you feel better, it is. Mark. It does. Right. Ah, I didn't know I've been fired, so it's kind of threw me off transferred. a little bit. Transferred. Did I say it? Whatever. Yeah, it's transferred. You were transferred, Mark. Um, another one is... You, <laughs> you were promoted. That's what I meant to say. Is... Uh, thank you. Is frequently asked questions. A little FAQ, I guess I should have labeled it. Um, okay. Your walkout. Obviously, Tupac. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> Ambitions of a writer. Writer, did you? I, I mean, obviously you get to choose that, but there's no copyright. There was an, there was an issue actually with that. Shockingly, there was. You mentioned that. It's funny you mentioned that because you don't know the story. Um, so, ambitions of a writer by Tupac. Um, so, I started training coming up in Texas in '98. Well, I was actually fighting in '97, '90, end of '96, '97, '98 amateur fights MMA. I was a kid, and I turned pro at '98. Uh, when I was 18 at the Humble Civic Center. It was like a rodeo arena. 50 bucks or something? It was like 200 bucks. I didn't get hey. paid. They ran yeah. off. The promoter ran off, and like the highest paid guy on the car was like 500 bucks. And he, and he took off early. Nice. Eve Edwards fought on that card. Eve Edwards fought. Uh, Travis Luter fought. Shannon Rich fought. Did they get paid? 
I don't know. It sucks if you're the only one that did. I mean, luckily I wasn't like, I need that 200 bucks, you know, like I did it just to, to be pro and like have my pro career. Um, anyway, so I, I fought on that card and, um, yeah, that was my first, first pro fight, but I was training back in, in the early days and, uh, fuck, what was the question? (laughs) (laughs) I went off on a crazy tangent. No, it was, uh. Well, shit, now I kind of forgot. Yeah, why, what, look? why do we forget the question? Because we did a shot of this stuff. Yeah, maybe that probably did something. Um, no, just oh, with the ambitions of a writer. Like, like you oh, said, yeah. there was a, uh, an issue with copyright. How did I forget perhaps? that, dude? I never, yeah. I never lose my train of thought. Yeah. Okay, so, uh, so yeah, I was training back in, uh, in the early days, and then we had to have multiple gyms. There was no MMA gym, so it was like a boxing gym, kickboxing gym, uh, BJJ gym. And the boxing gym I trained at was called Main Street Gym downtown, me and Airborne, Paul Gardner. <sighs> And we, we would go train at this boxing gym downtown, and it was called Main Street Gym, downtown Houston. And actually, Vander Holyfield, Reggie Johnson, uh, Frank T, all these guys would come in um, and train there sometimes. And the big star of the gym, the trainer the most, like Reggie Johnson, I think, was the biggest star. And he had his nice car. And, you know, anyway, so the whole time the, the training was going on, it was all, like, Tupac playing, a lot of Tupac. He was, like, probably the most common played uh, artist. Well, he's the best rapper of all time. Back then, yeah, back then it was it was like '97, you know, and so that's all I heard, Tupac, and I was like the, I mean, they would like we were we were just me and Airborne were just on the side like trying to learn what we could, and like you know they didn't give us much attention, and they would let us come in and spar, and they just beat the crap out of us, and like we were just those guys, you know, trying yeah. to trying to fit into a gym we didn't fit in, um, but we were there every day, and so listening to. Uh, those songs, Ambitions of a Writer, is the most common one that I remember the most. So when I got into UFC, that became my song to walk out to because that brought me back to that time when I was like training at Main Street Gym and I was like just dreaming of being somebody because I was like nobody at that gym. I was like beyond nobody. I mean, like right. I was literally like less than nobody at that gym. And guys would come up in their, es- I guess they had Escalades back then, but it was like these real nice cars and they had big names and they had respect. They had like entourages when they came in and people to do stuff for them and go get their water and go do the, wrap their hands and stuff. And I just remember thinking like, man, I want to be like that one day. I want to have like respect and people know who I was and everything. So when I heard that, when I hear that song, when you know, and when I heard that song, when I walked out for my fights, it motivated me and brought me back to like those days. And so then when I'm walking out, at Staples Center in front of, you know, 20,000 people. And it's a huge fight. You know, maybe I, when I fought my main event fight, my co-main event fight, these huge fights in the UFC, and there's millions of people watching on pay-per-view, you know, and I'm, I'm walking out to the same song that I was listening to when I was that little kid in the gym, wishing I, you know, could have made it. it. It was motivating for me, and it brought me back in a, to a peaceful place and a motivated, uh, you know, brought me that motivated desire to go out there and, 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 achieve what I dreamed of achieving and, and realizing where I'm at compared to where I was and like I should enjoy this moment and like go grab it because that exact moment when I heard that song when I walk out at like Staples Center or Mandalay Bay or MGM that was way beyond what I ever dreamed would have happened so it made me appreciate that moment a lot more that's you kind of touched on the follow-up is because I like I said I have actually cornered with you we did a one championship fight in Bangkok you remember mm-hmm. that yep and uh I mean I'm sure it's completely different from UFC you know, not saying it's not a good organization, but I'm saying it's just like, yeah, yeah it's obviously I, different. Yeah. Cause I've, I've been able to go like when you were fighting, especially in Houston and in California, I was able to go like to certain backstage with you. Then they were like, okay, who the fuck is this skinny asshole? Get out of here. You know? So I'm just curious, like are, right before your fight is about to start, I mean, obviously you can hear the crowd mm-hmm. and I assume they have TVs back there. And mm-hmm. that's, I'm sure there's a guy like, okay, Swick, you're up in 10 minutes or something like that. Yeah. Like, what is it right when that song starts? <clears throat> Cause I know when I, when because Houston and L.A. were the two best because that was obviously our hometown in Houston, mm-hmm. you know. And then in California, listening to Tupac in California, you know, that was kind of cool. But it was your comeback final. Staples stuff, so. Center it, where the Lakers play. Yeah, that, that helped. Too. And it's just me walking out with everybody looking at that. And then Tupac singing was probably one of the greatest walkouts of my career. That's what I mean. It just, the place went. No, you were there. The place yeah, went yeah. crazy. Oh, it was unbelievable. Yeah. yeah, thanks for not high-fiving me, yeah. by the way. <laughs> Y'all can YouTube that, too. I got screwed on that. But, um, like, I, like what, what goes through your – like. I mean, obviously, it's there to pump you up and yeah. all that stuff. And I just, I couldn't, because if I'm getting chills sitting there waiting for you to come out, I mean, is it a scare, fear factor type thing or scared or you just excited, adrenaline rush, adrenaline dump? or like when, when you wake up on fight day, you're scared. 
or feared or you're fearful, like you're nervous, I guess is the best way to put it. Um, and you're scared, you know, you're scared you're going to lose something that, that you want to have and you're going to let people down and you're going to disappoint people and including yourself, obviously. Uh, fighting is a selfish thing, you know, you're going out there trying to make a bunch of money for yourself, gain a bunch of fame for yourself. Um, you also have your team on your back, you have your family, you know, th there's a lot of th other people you're fighting for, but at the end of the day, you know, you got a lot of pressure on you. So, you know, when you walk out there, it's like uh, up until you walk out there, it's like a, when, from the moment you wake up, like for me, in the early days of amateur and when I first started out as pro, you'd be nervous like a week before. You'd be nervous like a month before. You'd be nervous like you're going to fight on like March 13th. You know, no matter what date it is, two months away or whatever. Today I got shot. Thanks for bringing that up. <laughs> you're nervous. You're nervous about that. Uh, but then as you get more experience, you get, you know, I can handle it and I don't think about it until like fight week. Then fight week, it like comes and goes and like it's like a roller coaster. It just comes in spurts. So you'll be fine and then you'll get that rush. And it's almost like a excitement but nerve rush at the same time because you think about the fight and you know that you're going to know the results of this fight very soon and then the morning you wake up is when you really feel it like that's when you earn your money the morning of the fight when you wake up from that point until you get to the arena is when you that you can't describe that feeling that that's a feeling of like because you train for two months for a fight and in my career every fight was the biggest fight so especially as i got toward title contention so like, if I won a fight, that was the biggest moment of my career. You know, and you're going to be on headlines. You're going to be on the news sites. You're going to be everywhere. You might be fighting for the title next. Two times, if I had to win those fights, I would have been fighting for the championship. Um, and if you lose the fight, you could be back at the bottom. Yeah. And you can get knocked out embarrassingly in front of everybody. And it could be humiliating. And it could be the worst thing that ever happened to you. And that happened to me, too. You know, I've, I went through the good and the bad. Um, Luckily, that night, remember Matt Brown, who else fought that night in a different sport? So nobody... Because remember, Pacquiao got knocked out the same oh, night. Oh, I remember that, yeah. So nobody really talked that. about UFC. Whew. You know? Yeah, it was crazy. But so, so it's like, yeah, you, you're <laughs> nervous. Up, so for me, I'm nervous up until the day of. And then the day of when I wake up, I'm nervous. And then when I get to the arena, usually I'll walk out and look at the octagon, and that's when I get a piece. Go back, and then I'm trying to get my mind off the fight. And then Bert, it used to be Bert Watson. He'd come in and be like, let's roll, let's roll. You know, he'd tell everybody, yeah. Swick, you got 10 minutes, 10 minutes. You know, 15 minutes, Swick, you're on deck, you're on deck. And his voice is just like, anybody that knows, anybody that knows, knows, that's listening to this podcast, they know Burt Watson, that that voice you hear, you hear it in your dreams when he would come back there because it's like when he would say it's time to go, you're walking out in front of 20,000 people live, millions of people in the world to fight a guy who's been training three months to beat you. And you're either going to, like I said, you're either going to have the best moment of your life and win a fight and, and be happy or you're going to get embarrassed and lose. So it's a crazy impacting moment and voice. And then as I'm walking out is when I start channeling everything and then when that music comes on, it's, it's fucking over then. I then, can, then I'm hurting. I can someone. imagine, man. There's a moment before I walk out of the locker room where I come to peace with like what I'm doing, and I come to the realization that I'm not going to let this person take away what I've done. This is why I train so hard. You've seen me train, obviously, and like how I'm so competitively to like a, a a detrimental degree where I try to not let anyone out train me. I, I'm very, very competitive, and I train to a point where I get injured and get hurt and hurt myself. So it's to a deficit. But um, I think about all that. And pretty much all that's wasted if I go out there and I lose. So I get that anger in my eyes to go out there and fucking win that fight. And usually it works. Usually, and, yeah. And, and it works out great. Sometimes it doesn't. But that's that fire that really drove me in the beginning when I first got in the UFC, which got those first five fights out of the way really fast and gave me my name and, and got me my, my recognition and, and my big start, which I got to, like, ride for a while, even through a few losses. Yeah, those are – I got to enjoy some of that – Ride with you. Yeah. Some of the perks of, like, never been in a limo really before that, before you. And there's there's yeah. some other stories we're not going to touch on, but those were. Uh, well, I did ask you, since you did bring up a, a couple, like I said, the lot, everybody has to lose, of course. But I want to always, I've never asked you this, is obviously you lost to um, Okami to fight uh, Anderson Silva. Mm -hmm. and you lost Dan Hardy to fight George St. Pierre. I blew two title shots, yes. Which one of those hurts more? Mm hmm. Like, I know, I mean, they're both, <laughs> they're literally, two, yeah, here, I need, yeah, yeah, I'll drink to that. Yeah. <laughs> which, which of the two worst moments of your career hurt the worst? What a great question. I mean, I wouldn't go, don't go by um, timing of your career. 
you know. It takes a friend that knows you 25 years to ask you such a dick mm-hmm. question. Well, I mean, it's, it's kind of. No, I'm kidding. Because would you rather have beat Anderson Silva? No, I get it. Would you rather have beaten. No, I, no, looking back, like the fight that I. It, okay. Looking back, what I know now, the fight that I would have wanted to have the most, looking back, would have been GSP. Now, and given that, I know for a fact GSP was a better fighter. GSP was a better fighter than all of us. I mean, it was unfortunate that the, the leader, the champion of our division, was one of the greatest fighters of all time. At, yeah, at that Fitch, time. Koshtek, you. I mean, we didn't have John gym. Jones back yeah. then. We didn't have Daniel Cormier. We didn't have uh, Khabib. We didn't have these guys back then. So at the time, George St. Pierre was the greatest of all, all time ever, you know, and he happened to be the champion. And so when I fought Dan Hardy, the winner of that fight fought GSP, and uh, I lost the decision. You know, it was a shitty fight. Um, I mean, we didn't hurt each other. It was kind of, a, you know, it went back and forth, and he got the win. He got the decision, and that one is the one I would I would have loved to have had because I had a really good Masvidal esque game plan to beat GSP, which I still think would have won. And it would have been along the Five lines. Five second flying knee in the beginning. It wouldn't have been that, but it would have been a, it would have been along the lines of like the Matt Sarah win because I did have fast hands and and I hit. I mean, I didn't hit people very much, and they take it. You know what I mean? Yeah. I wasn't like a Forrest Griffin, Stephen Bonner fighter. There's no, there's no fights in my career where I hit people, and we just hit yeah. each other for 15 minutes. It, one of us goes down. Marcus it, Davis. That was pretty close, I guess, the closest. We went had. back and forth with all kinds of shit hits. Yeah. But, like, yeah, it, it's so, – so, like, it would have been an aggressive fight that I could have won, and I still feel I could have won not from being a better fighter but possibly from being a better, stronger hitter and being faster at the punch. Because I know what he was going to do. Yeah. I knew exactly what he was going to do. And so I could have countered that. Um, looking back at, at Anderson Silva, I didn't know much about Anderson. He had fought uh, Chris Lieben, knocked him out. He fought Rich Franklin, and I was going to fight him after that. And that's when I took the Okami fight because Luter stepped ahead yeah. and, and fought Anderson. He, the, he won the TV show. Yeah, Ultimate Fighter. So, and then he beat Luter. I mean, it wasn't he didn't show anything more in Luter than in the Luter fight than he, he showed in yeah, Rich Franklin and, and and Chris Lieben. But he showed that he was a dangerous striker. So that was going to be a detrimental uh, fight if you didn't go out there and fight a perfect fight. And he was a BJJ black belt as well, though we didn't see much on the ground. So. And then now seeing what, you know, or now knowing what I know now, it's like that would have been yeah. way more than I would have expected. And, and it would have been, I mean, could I have possibly knocked him out? I mean, of course, I have to say that there's a chance. I had power and, and I did land and knock a lot of people out. But I think that that, that would have been probably not my way. Looking, looking at the fact that he, after, you know, I was supposed to fight him, he went on to become one of the greatest fighters of all time and beat everyone. I would have assumed he would have definitely found a way to beat me as well. Not taking anything away from George St. Pierre, I just felt like I would have done something that no one else would have done, which what Matt, Matt did yeah. <clears throat> during that time. And that's not put him on a pedestal, not try and be a better fighter and outpoint fight him, um, out technique him. I would have just street brawled. Tough to do. I would have just street brawled as fast, as fast and hard as I could every single time from start to finish, and that's where he was weaker as far as getting caught. Um, and he does in from the Koscheck fights and in the, the Fitch fight, I, I studied his takedown, so I knew where he was going to come from those takedowns. And I was working on striking, and I trained for the GSP fight. <clears throat> we we literally trained for that fight. Like we really thought we were going to get, get yeah before that. Trip. We literally thought we were going to get it. Um, the Anderson fight, we didn't know for sure. Obviously, if I beat Okami, but we didn't know how to train for him. But we literally was kind of like, after Fitch and Koshik lost, I was the one that we were working on to, to try to fight GSP. If, Which is tough when you're trying to fight a guy that you know is better than you. And you're just going off of like, you know, hopefully that you're outsmarting him in the way that, you know, you can counter something that he actually does and you land what you need to do. So it's, who knows? That would have been my best chances, though. I'm I would have right. watched. I would have watched that yeah. fight. If George St. Pierre is watching and he calls you out right now, would you fight him? No. Million dollars? No. I can't fight. I can't fight because I got LASIK surgery. Oh. We'll, we'll edit that out. Who cares? A million dollars. I, dude, there's not really anything that makes me want to fight again, to be honest. Money or anything. Ten million? One hundred million. I'd fight. There you go. One okay. hundred million, I'd I knew fight. we'd find it. I knew we'd I'd get, get new eyeballs, dude. For a hundred million, I'd fight. I just, yeah, I just, because I, I, I know you're obviously. A I'm a hundred percent business guy now. Like I, I know that the real money long term is revenue streams and and business. And I, I think I spent almost too much time after I lost the 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 GSP title shot uh, in fighting and, and not focusing that on business. So I'm already kind of feel like I was late. Yeah. 
I don't want to like set myself back again. Business is where you're going to make all your money. Entertainment is short lived, short lived. You got to make a name for yourself and then get out and then get into some kind of business that's going to help you. And hopefully you made a big enough name. Not so much that you can make money from that. Like it's, it's not like you're going to, a lot of misconception is people think that like, you know, like, like GSP is able to do it. He's a very rare situation. Like Anderson Silva is where, uh, is well, but, uh, and, and the Gracie's same situation. They're an exception to this, but most people can't make money from their fighting career alone. Like, in other words, you can't be such a great fighter that you come up with a system and that system sells so much and you open up so many gyms and because of your technique and your style, you're going to make money for the rest of your life and live happily with this, this great amount of money. You're going to have to make a name enough to build connections and networking to where you meet the right people right. to do business with to build business. And, and then that's what I've been able to do right. is because because of the, the fighting, I've gained respect with people that are uh, – very successful in business, billionaires, well, millionaires. Fields, yeah, besides. yeah. And then making those connections with those people, that opens doors where I can pursue business well, and then they want to help me and, I, and then I take that help and help them back and then now I pursue business like with AK. Well, because I, I remember, AK you know, obviously we were in like high school and stuff. You always want to be in movies. You yeah. have been in a movie. Yeah. Which is still pretty cool. Yeah. Uh, I think we've talked about it on here, but if not, yeah. do you have an IMBD page? Or <clears throat> yeah. IMBMB? I don't know. Beat down. I was in the final BM. fight scene, yeah. Um, my one, my one claim to fame film. I know you always wanted to be in movies. Mm -hmm. So answer this truthfully. Yeah. Would you rather win an Academy Award or a UFC belt, championship belt? Mm. Academy Award. Really? Yeah. God, it's so weird. I did not think you'd say that. Yeah. I'm dead serious. I, I mean, I'm not like an actor who's trying to win an Academy I mean, Award right if now. If there was no monetary, I, I understand Academy Award winners make more than you know. No, 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 no monetary. Like, yeah. like, like, you understand. This is the difference between me and everybody else. Like, 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 a lot of fighters see fighting as a career, and it is a career, but they see it as an only career. Like, that's it. Fighting is, is it. I never knew. I mean, I never assumed that. I never thought fighting was like it. Do you know what I mean? Like, it was never my end game. Yeah. Ever. Never, never, never was it my end game. That's why you started businesses while you were still yeah. fighting. Yeah. I had a print shop that I grew nine years into a huge print shop that did 11,000 shirts a day. You know, while I was still in the UFC, just sold that in 2018, uh, and then came here and built AK Thailand. So I was doing business all throughout my career. Um, it was never my end game. It, it was something where I wanted to make a name for myself. I was young. I feel like you know, I wanted to, to live my life and do something fun, and that's what I wanted to do. And, and and that was my option, I felt like, to become known for something. I didn't, I mean, fighting was all I had, you know. So I wanted to do it, enjoy it, travel, hopefully. I mean, I never expected to accomplish what I did, even though I didn't become a champion or anything. But but I definitely am grateful for what I did accomplish and and then eventually move into something else. So so. Yeah acting and being in films and still right now is a huge passion of mine now not necessarily acting but film like in general film is 100 percent my passion um i've looked at houses in la you know like that's where i'm going uh you know between phuket and la is where i will be based in the future and and i will be involved in film um maybe not acting maybe not being chuck norris kicking people and doing all that kind of stuff maybe. it doesn't really matter to me i'm not trying to be an actor um, I'm just really into film, filmmaking, the process, the industry, the people. It's just always been a passion of mine. I love movies. I love film. I've watched all kinds, you know, growing up watching all of it. So I'm still so passionate about it. I definitely want to do it. So like you say, winning an Academy Award would mean that I, that I trained hard enough to now become a great actor, do a film and win an award. Uh, that would mean more to me for sure than a belt, for well, sure. But it's a lot harder, I think, to win it because you got, what, what is yeah. it? Um, Dakota Fanning, what was she, nine when she yeah. won it? I don't know. If but but she the issue really is, I, I'm didn't. not saying that I can do it. You yeah. know what I'm saying? I'm, I know I'm not acting right now. I know I'm not in school. I might not yeah. even be a great actor. You know, I've only done minimal stuff. So I'm not. <laughs> Remember, we went to acting school. Don't take, yeah, we did do it. Acting. Let's talk about that in a second. I'm not, don't take things out of context. Like, I, I'm not saying I could win an Academy Award, yeah. by no way. But I'm saying if I was to a position where I could and had a choice of those two things, like win a, a UFC belt early in my career and then just get in business and do whatever after or win an Academy Award, that would mean more to me, honestly. Film has yeah. been a passion since before I ever even started martial arts. Film is what got me into martial arts. Film, Fil film is the reason I got this into martial much, arts. Uh, karate Kid. We've talked about it so much on here, you know. Mm -hmm. um, what's odd enough? I was so into film in high school that I drug you to a film class. Some Brandon guy who was like a – he was like the third business executive of the seventh floor of a, a uh, B movie in 87. 
And he was teaching an acting class. Yeah, he 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 was an <laughs> he extra goes. in uh, he was an and extra in uh, Walker Texas. He was Ranger. like an extra of yeah. an extra. Yeah, he was the extras yeah, extra. And I, he was teaching a class, and I took all those classes because I wanted to like hopefully move into film afterwards. And I brought you, and that was a fucking mistake, man. Yeah, I got kicked out. And you got you, kicked did out. Did you even finish the course? Because you got kicked out twice. I had to leave. It's a good friend. You fell asleep once. Then you made some weird, sarcastic. What did you say? What did you say to him? I can't remember something about. Well, one of them you was, said you were acting when I was sleeping. Oh, you were acting. Like, you can't asleep. sleep in my class. I'm like, I wasn't. I was acting. You're yeah, doing yeah. a great <laughs> job, coach. <laughs> Fuck that guy. That was that was the worst. He was kind of an moment. asshole, dude. And it was but 6 when, a.m. on a Saturday when you, morning. When, when you, you got caught morning. sleeping, and he was 100 percent convinced <laughs> you were sleeping, and you said that you were just acting, that and then you off. took a bow. That was probably one of the greatest moments to everyone in that class. Yeah, they. Uh, you lied to me. This you said there was gonna be a <laughs> lot of hot chicks in there, and the answer was no, Mike. I just wanted somebody to go with me. Well, I wasn't all the you know thinking there was gonna be some, and yeah, and uh, yeah. There wasn't that many hot chicks in that class. That's when we had uh, our hair highlighted. Because I have a videotape of a commercial we had to film. We filmed the commercial yeah. in that class. I still have it at home. Or did you sleep through that? No, no. I, I did like an aspirin commercial. God, when you said I was just acting, got you and took your God, bow. Was such a douchebag. That was one of the best moments ever. And he was like the caterer on the I was proud of you for being, witch movie. I was so proud of you for being such a failure in that class at that point. I was almost like, that's my boy. You were, hey, As I, we were getting kicked out. Do you remember when... Um, <laughs> We were selling cars together, and nobody told me because you worked there about two months before I yeah. did. And nobody told me where the meeting was. Mm. And I walked in late in the meeting, and there's about 250 40 yep. year old douchebag car salesman in there. And the, uh, <laughs> there goes our car salesman <laughs> yeah. audience. Well, yeah. Car selling was good for me, man. I made good money. Yeah. I, I, when I walked in there, that the. the uh, you were never on time for anything. No, 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 no. Still not. Yeah. So, I mean, it's not like you, you, you have to stress yeah. to me you were late. Well, it was, you it, just say you showed up and then I know automatically. Is that why you, you bought me this? Yeah, that's why, that's why like, you, you just say you showed up and I automatically know you were late. Um, when, uh, I can't but I remember, remember this in particular. He was dating the owner's daughter. Remember that? Yeah. And he was like the area director for the whole thing. Mm -hmm. And I walk in and everybody's, you know, every turn around, I'm just like, oh, shit, I've got like yellow lens Glasses with my yellow you look shirt. Like Bono. Yeah, I looked yeah. like a fucking complete It was, pretty it was 1999. And that's when, uh, <laughs> that's when I walk in and everybody, you know, looks at me and then the G, whatever he was, how high up, he goes, Oh, nice you to join us. I was like, Look, man, it's my second day ever working for your company. Nobody told me where the thing was. He goes, Oh, well, I guess you don't own a watch either then, do you? Do you remember what I said? I, I know it's funny, but I can't remember. I said, Why don't you check on your wife's nightstand when you get home? I oh, think I left that's it there. Right. I do remember that. And, uh, yikes. Nobody laughed for the first two nope. seconds, but then afterwards. Yeah, then they laughed. You got a little chuckle. Yeah. I didn't get fired, which is oddly enough. But, but yeah, fuck that guy. Dude. You don't call me out in front of 250 of my peers. God, you have had some stories, man. I've been fired 80, well, 89 times now. I and only promoted and transferred by me. <laughs> you know you've been fired a lot when you, I don't know that you fired me. You know, so. <laughs> you don't so even I remember when I fired yeah. I was like, ah, how do I fire him? I just transfer him. Okay. Yeah, those were good times, man. You're great at your job, dude. The problem was it just took us four years to find it. Well, 34. You're funny and you're a great people person. No. Oh. Well, how much of those have you had to drink? I think you'd be a good comedian, but uh, I don't want to say it too loud because then you're going to be all famous and I'll lose you. And I need you. You're a huge part of AK Thailand. So I would, I would be sad without you, my man. Keep it coming. Keep it coming. You make a lot of money for the company. I try. I've had a good so time. don't pursue comedy. No, nah, it's a little late. Nobody you would suck that anyway, and you're 40. Yeah, yeah, AK Thailand is pretty much all you have. Although wasn't um, Morgan Freeman like 48 his first acting Do you think day? I know this? Like, do you really think it late at night when well, I'm – You're the one that might win when an when Academy till, Award. When I'm up till 3 in the morning, <laughs> you think I'm Googling Morgan <laughs> Freeman? Is that what you think? Probably. Google him now. Oh, God. Don't we got a stat guy over the day there? I, oh, the day I Google Morgan Freeman, dude. Yeah, I'm going to go ahead and uh, – So go ahead and uh, – what else? What else you got for me, buddy? Man, I don't know. Kind of, kind of went off topic. We went all, fun. we went all willy nilly on it. You know what I mean, Mike? That's <laughs> <laughs> let me, uh, why don't you let me catch a gander here at these notes? I don't even know where I'm at anymore. A, a gander. Yes, like the what goose. Are, are we the? Is this the Great Gatsby now? <laughs> are we in West Egg? <laughs> what the hell is West Egg? You know, I've never seen the or read the Great Gatsby. That's why you said, "What is West Egg?" I've seen the, uh, the play though. A gander. What is wrong with you, dude? Here. Uh, I know you don't have anything in there. I missed it in here, man. It's good times. Like I said, I love what you've done to the place. That's you could be strong. in the uh, 
this gym thing fails. Yeah, the we'll interior just, decorator. We'll just, yeah. Because let's be honest, how many pictures of this did you send me while you were doing it? A lot. I'm proud of decorating things. I, I told you, I, like, I, I felt like, man, maybe I should have been a decorator instead of... I built a gym and a studio for podcasting. Yeah, it looks good. I take pride in it. I enjoy doing these things. I don't know Kind of like the gym, too. It's a lot of pictures and stuff I, of I yourself. Hope, you, I, know? <laughs> <laughs> you know what's funny about that? No, there's some, a bunch yeah. of Chuck Liddell and there's other guys in there. But the thing is, I don't, have, to be the I don't have much memorabilia that has no, to do with the podcast and fighting other than stuff that's, like, mostly myself. So, so like... That's, no, no. that's actually mostly not myself. We got Khabib's hat. We got a lot of skulls. We got a fair text thing. We got. Uh, I will always Hunt. have that picture of me and Schwarzenegger because that's just an amazing day and it costs a lot of money. You each got to wear cowboy hats. Yeah, that's a lot of fun. It was an AKA Thailand charity event. So just so you guys know, I'm gonna promote it. It was, it was Ar- every year Arnold Schwarzenegger, Arnold Schwarzenegger does a charity event for uh, after school all stars, and he does it at his house. I'm pretty sure it's Bel Air or Brentwood. I don't know. The driver took us, but it was Bel Air or Brentwood. I couldn't afford either. And it was beyond crazy getting in there. It was like, uh, like security, like like. Then it was like the the government security, like Secret Service. I mean, it was like everything because he was a governor. So it was like crazy getting in. I didn't even think about that. And then my name was on the list, but it was they couldn't find it. So then it was like everyone in the car was okay, but me. And it was like, I thought I wasn't going to get in. And then they finally found my name on the list. And then we get in. And so you, you pay money to go to his house. And it's a real intimate. Uh, well, you got sponsored to go there, right? You didn't pay out of pocket, correct? Yeah, well, AK yeah, Thailand. Yeah. I mean, it was the same oh, thing. Oh, yeah. I, I remember I got to stay here and work. <laughs> yeah, it was <laughs> AK Thailand did it. And we all went. And uh, so we, we go there. And it's like an intimate situation at his house. And, you know, Sylvester Stallone's there, Jason Statham, every director and and producer and uriah faber was there and it's a poker tournament where you can actually win prizes so you could win like nice watches and brightling and and uh all all the fancy rolex and uh and hublo watches and stuff and then you play poker and uh and you spend a lot of money and and hang out with and it's he really is cool it's an intimate thing and like you wonder like these charity events where it costs money to get in and, and be a part of if it's worth it and if it's good 100 percent like you really feel like you're just hanging out at his house with with yeah, all of your, your gift bag had a bunch of nice shit. yeah it so. was like ten thousand dollar gift bag or I'm something. sorry swag swag bag and I'm, that, I'm old this was given to me in the swag bag there was this have we drank any of that yet? Which I think was just from a sponsor. I don't think Arnold had anything to do with it. But this was given to me there. And also, I got a T-shirt of Arnold flexing. <laughs> oh, neat. Yeah. But it's from Arnold. So I wear that shirt. It's super comfortable, too. Soft weird. cotton. And it fits tight. It's almost like he knew my size. Because when I put it on, I can feel my muscles. Like this shirt, almost. Wow. Yeah. So I wear it like when I'm going to the gym and I'm just like, nobody knows Arnold gave me that. that your, your night and shirt? no matter what, he hands you the gift bag. So like no matter what's in it, where it came from, whether he even saw it, it came from him. So it's like Arnold gave me that. It's Arnold got, gave yeah, me that. Makeup and nail Arnold polish. Arnold gave me that. Yeah. yeah. Arnold gave me that. So I, I hold it all very dear and sincere to my heart. Wow. Okay, so I'm sorry, I got off track, man. We'll, we get, we'll get off the name dropping section of these questions. Yeah. <laughs> I'm friends with Arnold. I think I think I'm finished with the name dropping. <laughs> Buddy, that was a cool moment. No shit that I, you missed. What? Yeah, no, no, I missed. I missed a lot. I know you've done. That's that. why you work so hard, bro. And like, oh, like you haven't met celebrities and cool people working at AK Thailand. Like Every two weeks, to. somebody's here. Yeah, and they you're love on me. stage with OT Genesis, Steve Aoki, me, all these people. Come on, bro. Who made that Steve Aoki happen though? You got to give me that. Come one. on, bro. Like, oh, Dan Bilzerian's here. Dana I, White's here. Damian Hurst is here. Okay, you're naming all these people whose houses you went to. I yeah, meet them here. You meet them and hang out with them. Yeah, that don't mean shit to me. I want to. I want free stuff. I like. You know how I like. Why do you get free stuff from these people? Yep. How much you pay for the tequila and your flexing shirt that you sleep in? <laughs> that was a lot, dude. <laughs> I donated a lot to the after school's all stars. After school all stars. It's a kids program. Is that dude. what it is? Yeah. That's, that's Schwarzenegger's uh, charity. He does it every year. Well, see, because I know you were you're bringing up. So if you ever want to go to Schwarzenegger's house in Brentwood or Bel Air or wherever the hell it is, it's an amazing house. It's, it's, a, it's a country house. And it's a What's the address? Great location. I don't know the address. Um, but I will say this. He had a crocodile or alligator. He had a, a live buffalo that met you at the door. Dead serious. A buffalo 
Um, wait, wait, wait. But if you ever want to go, you, you can <laughs> actually look door. it up and buy tickets, I think. I think you can buy – we had connections, but I think anyone who has the money can go. You pay a certain amount of money, and you donate to After School All-Stars. It's a program that he created, I think, 30 years ago to help kids – uh, build, you know, build stuff for them after school to do instead of getting in the streets and doing dumb shit. It's good when people give back. Yeah. So it was good. It was a great event, uh, event and I uh, got to meet a lot of cool people. I learned something on the uh, previous podcast, yep. which you go back and look. Uh, ooh, hadn't dropped yet, but it's Brandon Vera, just so you know. Brandon Vera? Uh, I, I forgot. That's the next podcast. Yeah, no, well, I know, but I've but seen it. But it may have already dropped by the time yeah. this, this drops. Um, I didn't know you did so It much. was the last podcast. This yeah. will drop after. Do you always interrupt your guests whenever yeah. they're on? Okay. This is my show now. So. Well, I thought it was you told me. Uh, there it goes again, huh? No, um, I don't know. You did so much for the community around here. Like, I, I, I knew about, like, not to ruin it for people that are going to see it, but but because uh, it was obviously before I got here. Mm-hmm. So that was, uh, I had forgotten all the nice stuff you did and to help out the, because, you you know, AK Talon's in a neighborhood, if yeah. you will. You know, so, like I said, I'm not going to ruin it for it's, the next It's weird podcast, that he but. touched on that because he mentioned about, I never told Brandon Vera that I've done charity things ever. I've never mentioned to him one time that I've done charity. And all he did was mention, I'm sure you've done charity things yeah. and we've never seen it. And so then, of course, we mentioned, we talked about some of the stuff that I've done around Thailand. Like, well, you know, you can't build a company this going big. Going to the troops and all that stuff. I mean, not only did I support the troops, but I'm saying, he, but then we talked about obviously when you build a company this size in a village, that's a, that's a pretty poor village. You you do a lot, you know, like you, you not only create jobs, we've got 50 employees, but there's like transformers that need to be done. A lot of these houses don't have the right electricity. There's not a, there's not a lot of like, and then we need this stuff as well. And then, um, you know, they didn't have paved roads. They didn't have water drainage. They didn't have. That, that and to the, me, that was the coolest one was the drainage because I didn't realize. Yeah, drainage because it flooded. The whole street's it, flooded. Because obviously, you know, there's a point where you can only go so far to help out the neighborhood. Yeah. Distance wise, like right. from it. So right. if you. We did it all the way to macro. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. Because there, there's points where. And you're we like, paid for all that. Okay. It's flooding here. Now, once you get to where you started what your thing, it doesn't flood. Right. Yeah. I, you know. We wouldn't I mean, have it, flooded. We would have been the start yeah. of the flood, and it would have went down but the yeah, whole village. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And so, like, you know, just the lay of the land on the mm-hmm. mountains and all that stuff. So, I, you know, I forgot about that. You know, you just... And it's not like I'm trying to get credit for it now. It's it, no, it's I, not like a... Ch- it, it, well, it, I rarely compliment you on anything. No, I know, but so it, it, it's it, nice to... It, it, sometimes, the thing is, nowadays, it's like, before, I wouldn't have minded, like, doing a video, because we did videos when we did things in, in the beginning of AK Thailand, and you've seen tons of celebrities... They get brought on charity events and they film it, and it's not them doing it. It's like maybe a third party that organizes the trip, right? right? And then they do this trip where the the I've done this in the UFC where I've done charity events, and and I've been a part of these groups where the group organizes it, and you go do this big charity thing, and you go do a charity thing, then you're not posting it, and we had MySpace back then, so it's not like you're really doing much about it, right? It's not like people do an interview, and you're like, oh, by the way, guess what? I just did this, so it's not a big deal. But this group that goes with you benefits somehow from promoting this whole thing and then they promote the whole thing and so then they're like well today you know Diego Sanchez and uh Kenny Florian and Mike Swick and Forrest Griffin all these guys from the Ultimate Fighter season one went and did this 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 helped the kids out we helped the kids programs in, in Las Vegas and we did a lot of stuff with, with the uh the the kids there um and then they would do it and then we would get bashed about it like oh y'all are just doing charity things for publicity and stuff like that so yeah it's it's it, you know and so it makes it almost like not want to you, you not want to tell people when you do stuff yeah. like that because it's automatically going to be a negative thing. Like when you say you're injured after you lose a fight or something like that. Yes. And and the point people of charity is to do something nice and and it, as long as that village is happy with, with with us and we're creating stuff for them and things are happy. And like I told Brandon Vera, like the satisfaction I get is when people come, not even counting the charitable stuff, but just building the gym in general. What we've done and what you've done is a great thing. You know what I mean? Like we built a company, like I told Brandon, which. Everyone's already seen yeah, it because it, 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 it was the episode before this. Yeah. Uh, we built a company that that is creating success. That's great. How many times have you told me this? How many times have you said you're excited to go to work? I mean, how many, so many times in my life, or just with this company? No, no not okay. in life. <laughs> this company. How many it started ta- with how yeah. many times did you say you're genuinely excited to go to work on Monday, yeah, or I, I like you? You we we'd be talking to other people, and you're like, you know, the weird thing is, is like I'm genuinely so excited to go to work each day yeah. because we meet such cool people. That like are so excited to be there. That's what it is. It's and not they accomplish about, their yeah, goals. The they accomplish their, yeah. yeah. It's just like like I mean, I literally have taken people around when I you know they're like, yeah, hey, I saved up for nine months to come here, and they're literally in tears because they get yeah. and it is overwhelming. It's crazy, here. right? And it's and like when you know they cry. I'm a I'm a sucker for when people cry. You know. Hey, when I right. show up and everybody's crying, and I'm just kidding. 
Let's speak. That's the workers. It's because our funds That's when are Oscar dies with the dog. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> good, good save. <laughs> that means nothing to most people, but uh, yeah, man. Like I said, it was just uh, you know. Spe- speaking of MySpace, you know, what always hurt me, and I don't think I ever told you this, mm. was uh, you could put a top eight all your top eight friends. Mm. I never made the top eight. Were you on MySpace? Relax. So uh, yeah, you told me to. <laughs> You're the one that told me about it. So, I barely remember. The only thing I remember from MySpace now is that Matt Brown, the whole story with him that I told again. With well, that's Brandon. why I'm gonna I'm gonna make you think about something tonight when you try to go to sleep. Oh, okay, great. So you never put me on your top eight. Mm-hmm. Was uh, it nine? It was nine, top nine, I think. Stop. You keep going nine. There's only eight episodes of the Jordan documentary. There's only there's eight. nine episodes of the Last Dance. I hundred percent looked. <sighs> How many months before August? It's eight. Seven. August is the eighth month. Well, way to be there. But anyway, <laughs> so, <laughs> I'm blaming it on the scotch. <laughs> then they went to a top 16 that you could have. <laughs> oh, I remember that day. And you still didn't. I'm like, that. I got eight more people I can add. <laughs> so I feel me and Matt Brown, if he's watching, we need to get him on here. I was proud. Cause, yeah, Matt Brown knocked me out over that. He was cool. Well, watch the last episode. So if you're watching this episode and you're enjoying it, watch it. Seriously, one of my favorite episodes is the last episode that just got posted with Brandon Vera. Or maybe like 10 episodes ago, depending on when we posted this. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Brandon Vera, I assure you, will be posted before this one will. Um, that, that was a great episode. Brandon Vera is such a great guy. And we talked about it. Yeah, I got, I got my ass kicked because I didn't answer a MySpace message. And I ended up getting knocked out on TV in front of the world on a main card on Fox. So that taught me. It wasn't that bad. It was just. I like how they used that to sell the fight. Yeah. And then I got knocked out. <sighs> and and the create and get my back on this. Who answers people? And spends more time on the forums and Reddit and, oh. and, and social media liking, answering, and responding to people more than I do. And well, that's s- the AK website. That's me. No, that's you, yeah, obviously. But, but still, oh, I do so much Reddit? of that, right? And it's can legit. You, can you not it's attest? It's really you. A lot of people don't think it's really can you. Can you attest answer. that I do so much yeah. of that? Amazing that I'm the one that got knocked out for not responding to somebody. It's amazing. That, like, <laughs> it's amazing to like, me. I had There's not- so many fighters that don't give a shit about people, and they well, don't respond saying. to anybody. Because you're up. I respond to everybody almost. And you're up till, like I said, you're up so late. Three in the morning. I had a nightmare last night. And I woke up at four. You said, "Are you awake?" And I texted you. I was like, "Not to cry about." I my didn't nightmare. respond because I didn't want to hear your blabber. Really gay. I wasn't going to call you about that. I was just see if you're awake. Maybe play mm-hmm. a little. Uh, can we plug Golden Tea? Yeah, that's fine. <laughs> God bless it. But that's what I'm saying. Like I just assumed you're awake at four a.m. You know, so it really is you on there, and that's pretty impressive for the most part. Yeah, which is, I'm, I'm not. I'm trying to like boost myself, but I'm just saying it's funny that of all the people I know, I spend more time answering people's questions and doing yeah. stuff because it, it helps you know, Matt interact. Brown. But it's funny I'm the one that got my ass kicked for it because I didn't answer it was Matt also Brown. MySpace. What was that? 2003. Yeah, but it was my face that he broke in fucking UFC on Fox Five well, in front of the sick. world. You were sick. So it went from my space to my face, and that's not cool. <laughs> Seattle, December 2009? I don't even remember. I don't remember. It, it hurt so bad, right. and it you killed so many brain cells. So, yeah, I, don't even, I, I barely remember who did it. It was the only legitimate knockout of my career. I'm looking at the camera when I say that. Chris Brown didn't. I mean, Chris Brown. Chris Brown. <laughs> You're not Rihanna. We're talking about Matt Brown. It's who we punched. <laughs> Before I even took the shot, uh, Chris Lieben did not knock me out. He stunned me. That's Ooh. all. It was a TKO. I'd never been knocked out until Matt Brown. And Matt Brown knocked me out for like five seconds. Probably because he woke me up with another 17 punches when he was on top of me. Yeah, that didn't help. Mm. Who was the ref then? And that was a brutal knockout. There's nothing worse than getting knocked out and then like falling backward. And, and it's like, you know, I, I'm the worst at like hitting people like 50 times before the ref pulls me off. But it doesn't feel so good when you're on the other end. And, like, you see the video and you're just like, damn, Brown. Like, I was out, bro. Like, when I'm falling like a tree trunk like this. Yeah, poor uh, the showing out. Tree trunk. If he, was, he wasn't stuck up against the cage, he probably could have taken six less punches. But the reason I was punching showing out was because I tripped. Why are you tripping? I don't know, but I tripped and fell on my knee, so I didn't know where he was. I was, like, punching straight, and then I was on my knees. And I'm like, did I get hit? I didn't know what happened, so I was just – I was punching up. <laughs> so then I'm, like, trying to find his face. And then, like, next thing I know, he fell down. And so then, like, Herb Dean or whoever it was was there, and I was just like, shit, I hope I won. <laughs> wow. Way to plug yourself for being coach of the year in 2018. Dude, I'm telling you, like, that was a weird feeling when you're running across the ring punching somebody, and then you're on your knees. Because I felt no punch at all. I just remember I was on my – I completely tripped while punching someone. Or, or not even punching, but just running at someone. I was running at them, and then I just went and took, a, never, took a knee, and I was just like, what the fuck am I doing? I've never punched somebody. 
Yeah. Or been on my knees in front of somebody. It feels so. good to, to punch someone oh, when, 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 when you're going to win a <laughs> fight. <laughs> but well, then, it doesn't feel so good when you lose a fight that way. Can you honestly, do you even hear or do you even think about all the people watching? Or what would bother me more is, I mean, yeah, you got, well, let's say fifteen to 20,000 people in this audience, whatever. But there's a million plus watching at home mm -hmm. or bars or whatever. You know, but same, they're watching on TV. You yeah. know? Does that ever even cross your mind? Mm -mm. No, you know what? When I walk out. Because I don't like these cameras here. When I, when I walk out, I feel like – I don't think about the, the millions of people, whatever you say, but I do think about the team. I do think about that. So, like, I feel like, you know, I always wanted to be in the military, which is why I've done so many support tours and stuff like that. And I never went in the military. I felt bad about that because my fighting career took off. So I felt like a soldier as a fighter, kind of, like going to war. And I know there's no comparison, and I'm not trying. I know somebody got in trouble for saying that before. Like, fighting is yeah. like the military and going to war. I know there's no comparison. Going to war is one of the most horrific things and traumatic things. That's nothing. The PC thing is It's bad, not right? even close as hard as fighting. Trust me. I'm Or, sorry, uh, fighting is not near as hard as going to war. I get that. I've been all over the world, Iraq, Afghanistan, multiple times. Those guys are the real heroes. But what I'm trying to say is when I would go out there, I would feel like it was like my turn to go to go to battle. And I would I would think about all the, you know, Team AK at home watching on TV and rooting for me. And I had to go out there and win this fight for the team. I would think about that, but not like, I mean, I didn't think in depth. But I will say this. The cool thing was like the Gideon, no, not Gideon, the, um, the Marcus win. So like what we looked on YouTube at the – People post videos of like the TV and like the reaction. Yeah. It's really cool seeing the reaction after you have a big win. And then you look on YouTube and then or people send you clips on YouTube, whatever, and you look and it's like people sitting at home and and you 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 know you're they're filming the TV and then you knock someone out and they're all jumping on the yeah. chairs and like getting all yeah. crazy. Oh. Then you start thinking about like how many people could have possibly done that around the world and you're like, wow. Because that's I'd, cool to make one out of every ten thousand people film themselves watching something, you know. So that's but what it I'm probably saying, so like I've done things that probably created that kind of excitement, and that's self gratifying to me. Like wow, you know, for that moment, yeah. I took people out of their their stresses of their life and whatever they were down about that day, and and they were jumping up and excited for ten seconds or yeah. fifteen seconds or whatever it was. So that's a good feeling you think about afterwards. But yeah, no, I don't think about that shit when I'm in there. Definitely not. Were the good old days. Good huh? days, yeah. And by the way, like we, we, me and Mark have a a douchey game kind of thing going. So if it's if we, if we come off douchey, we play the douchey game all the time when we're doing these. So, um, well, but I, I want to say uh, one of the things that um, during the podcast, somebody left a comment recently, and they were like, uh, "And we're so unfamous right now in the podcast that I do read the comments." It's not like one of those things where it's like <laughs> Joe Rogan, and it's like I don't read the comments because there's seventeen thousand. I read them. There's like 10. I got you guys. <laughs> I do read the comments. And they're and all about me. I, and I do respond. And someone was like, wow, Mike's way less arrogant than he used to be or something like that. Something along those lines. Well, he doesn't know you. If, if you were around me and Mark more, you would think that we were douches because we play this game where we just – Overly out douche each overly other. try to outdouche each other and be and, and sometimes it carries over and the people here and they're like they must think we're out of our mind but for the most part uh, I think people get a big misconception on my Instagram when I was growing up and I want to clear this up just for the people that leave this comment I'm sure if one person left a comment there's 50 people that think this um, when I was a kid and I was growing up I was always looking like Dupont Registry and like. Um, yacht magazines and and mansion magazines and shit like that that shit inspired me that shit like made me no motivated. Yeah, sometimes. Okay, okay. So that shit inspired me and made me feel really good about like one day achieving that, which I haven't yet. Yeah, I, haven't, I don't have a yacht. I don't have those mansions. That, that, that You're never going to have a yacht. I'm, I'm saying, if, if you had the money to get one, <laughs> you would a never get a yacht. Dick. Just so you know. I'm I could saying, possibly have a yacht. You wouldn't, I don't think if you had the money, you'd buy a yacht. Yeah, probably That's not. That's just stupid. I know it's a, it's waste. a waste of fucking time. Right. You could charter one, but I don't think I'd buy one. Yeah. So the thing is, but I would look at all this stuff and I'd get motivated by it and then I'd see people that are rich and that'd motivate me. And I'm not trying to say I'm rich or anything, but like when I post a lot of stuff on Instagram, a lot of it's for inspiration because I get a lot of messages of people saying that I'm inspired by you building the gym and you living this life and you're in PP and you're having this great time and this adventure, which PP is not like, it's not like we're on like yachts and PP. I mean, yeah. we're, it's cheap to do most of the stuff we post. I yeah. mean, it's not like we're showing off like gold and bling, but I think people get the misconception that I'm trying to show, off, show off my life. But in reality, I'm just trying to show our life, which is really our life. Yeah. It's a true story and it is what you can do here. Well, and it's anybody it, who comes here can do yeah. it. You don't have to have any money. And I have a business here. So that's it, the point it's, of you all, it's marketing. Yeah. You know what yeah. I mean? Like I'm showing you if you come to my business, which is marketing and, and do, you know, spend money at the gym and, and get a membership and train, you can also do these things that you see me doing because it's all real. It's like you can go to the islands. You can go cruise on boats. You can go do all these fun things. Yeah. So. 
I think it's a big misconception that people think that like I'm trying to show off and and, and maybe it is a little bit. Who knows? Everyone has a little yeah, ego, I mean, of course. Nobody puts that they skin I'm, their knee on Facebook or Instagram. Yeah, you know, I'm, it's, I'm it's a small town. Parts I'm a life. small town Texas boy, so I'm not going to say that I've never showed off or, or tried to act successful just because there's been millions of people in my past. More people I can remember say you're not going to make it than people say you are going to make it. So there's a little bit of that. You want to rub in those those guys' faces, and then sometimes it gets carried over. But I don't intentionally try to want to hurt people and make them feel bad because I have a better life than them or I get speaking, to do fun things. Speaking of I want to motivate back, them. Speaking of going back, do you remember where you met me? I know when, you know, obviously obviously we were in 95 or whatever, but do you remember where? I moved high school so much when I was in high school. So I, okay, but I didn't move there with you. No, I know, but this I moved around so much. So to. then I got to Clear Lake High School, which is where NASA is. And I think I was sitting at the cool people table and then like – I think you walked by, and I think you had some socks on that looked cool or something. And I was like, hey, man, come sit with us or something. Okay, there was like a – my friend was gone. J- JB, my friend was gone, <laughs> and there was a free spot right here. And I was like, hey, come sit with us. But you're like, I don't know if I can, man, because that's a cool table. So I eat in the it, library. I can't go there. Is that not what happened? I don't remember. Maybe you're right. I don't know. No, that's I, I don't think that's what happened. I wasn't that cool. No, we had different dreams growing up. So well, tell me then. <laughs> oh, I do remember when I met you. I remember the day I met you. What? Can I tell the story? Well, yeah, that's why I asked it. You sure? Because it's you committing a crime. I was working at... Is that the one you're going to tell Were you me? working? Well, or I was stealing. I was stealing at Subway. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, well, you were you weren't stealing. If the you spokes- weren't like robbing, say <laughs> sub, uh, Subway or whatever. I but think that if the spokesperson for Subway can fuck kids, <laughs> then I can give away a free sandwich. You know? <laughs> wow, that is okay. All righty, shout out to Dave. Who the hell's Dave? Isn't it David or whatever Dave? It's guy? Jared Fogel. Oh, it is Jared. Why did I say Dave? God. I don't know. Who the hell? Well, I'm the, glad. Dave, Dave is the founder of Wendy's. Oh, okay. Well, he's a pedophile, too. <laughs> I don't Cause know. Because he put his granddaughter on the side. Hey, he's a pedophile. Good. Hey, I'm happy to confuse pedophiles. I'm good that I'm happy that I don't know who they are and what their names are. I'm, that makes me feel better. Yeah, we need some more of this. Uh, okay. So anyway, juice. anyway, so I met you at Subway. You were a sandwich artist. And we were in high school. <laughs> <laughs> you were a sandwich artist making sandwiches. I was and, 16 years old. Yeah, and you're and uh, my friends were like, I don't know if I was with JB at that time or not. And they were like, oh, let's go hang out at Subway. We can get free sandwiches from Mark. How different the he, 90s were. Let's he's go a, hang out at Subway. He's a cool guy, and uh, let's, go, let's go hang out with him for a while. It's like, all right, cool. Anyway, I ended up at Subway, and you were there, and you were cool because you gave me a free sandwich. Yeah, of course. And, and we hit it off, and uh, yeah. Wow. I'm glad you remember that. Dude, this all started with a, uh, a foot long, I guess you could say. <laughs> I don't think that, you know, it's not so much that I was stealing. It was... Um, no, you were just making friends, dude. Well, no, no matter no matter what sandwich you got, I would just charge you the cheapest sandwich. He had a scheme. Regardless, it was still theft. He had a yeah, scheme. No, still, he had a full scheme. But again, he's I like, they ca- he's, like, he's like, they count the cup, computer. so I got to get you this cup, and they count bring, the wrapper, so I'm going to get I, you this. Dude, and that's like, why I would put... A, what he I had would, the whole thing down. He, he could have literally... If it was, I if would it was page, today, then, he could put out like a video series on how to scam Subway. Oh, anyway. Oh, I can scam Olive Garden so to this day. don't water it down like I just watered I my whiskey down. I can make $600 a shift at Olive Garden without anybody knowing. Yeah, you could. Just so you know. <laughs> so anyway, that's how I met you. Yeah, but yeah, that was all right. Well, I just and see. this is how smart I am. I decided to get, go eventually build a multi-million dollar gym and then hire him to be in charge of it and trust him fully. A guy that I met stealing <laughs> from his company. He was stealing from his company when I met him, and now he's my most trusted employee next to Greg over here. Um, then why'd you fire me? <laughs> I promoted you. I didn't know I was. We fired. got over this. <laughs> it still hurts. <laughs> it still. All right, moving on. Um, Why do you got to look at notes? I don't look at notes. Well, because I wanted to do a couple lightning round. Qu- oh. Yeah, does this, does this thing work? <laughs> All right. I didn't uh, didn't quite charge like yeah. I thought it was going to. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, there we go. Hold up, put it over here. Did it work? Oh, oh is this a lightning is. round? <laughs> Greg, get the lights. <laughs> oh, yeah, let's hit the lights. We can do this. Everything's on battery. Oh. oh. How many podcasts do this, huh? Oh, man, let's do it. Um, I don't know. I was going to ask you just some stupid, like, ten questions of just random crap. Okay. And it's got to be one to... Why don't you get to the questions? Well, because I can explain the rules. I'm ready for that. I'm ready for that. Um, these are more of a... Something is going, like, directly into my eye. Like, it's horrible right in my eye. <laughs> this is such a horrible idea. I had LASIK surgery. I'm probably going to be blind after this. Um, 
just stupid shit. Like, uh, okay, a lot of people don't know that you are extreme. You and Tyron Woodley are the cleanest motherfuckers yeah. I've ever seen on the planet. Y'all wash Nobody hands would believe that. after you wash your hands to wash off the old <laughs> soap. Like, it is unbelievable what y'all do. <laughs> and I know for a fact you've never smoked a cigarette in your life. I have. No, 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 not a full one. I would no, say no, 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 and that's another reason, another story we can't get into. <laughs> no, but, no, no, but I've, I've smoked cigarettes before in that same predicament. Yeah, yeah. But I like figured, yeah. puffs. Yeah. yeah. Just, yeah, I don't know So why. would you rather smoke a cigarette or eat a piece of bologna that's fell on the ground? I, you would, had to do I would chew a cigarette and swallow it. So you'd risk cancer over... Uh, I would, I would, I would souffle cancer. Before I would get what, a, what a this, dirty bologna off the this floor. This OCD cleanness come from? Why are you so Dude, ridiculous? I don't know. Like, okay, so when I was a kid, okay, so I'm not OCD like like some people are OCD. Some people are OCD like they count things like they shut the door like seven times. Yeah, those are I don't like. And those I'll people. make fun of them while I'm washing my hands 27 <laughs> times. You know what I mean? I'm like that idiot shutting the door 16 times. Um, I don't I don't like line things up perfect, but I am a perfectionist. You know that obviously. Mm. When I build a gym, design the street, everything has to be perfect. So I am I'm a perfectionist. But it's not like everything has to be counted and numbered. So I'm not that OCD. I must be OCD, like the disease in the brain OCD. I must have a little bit of that. But I think a big part of it is from fighting. Because um, being a fighter for so long, um, I was terrified of getting sick all the time. Because during fight camp, if I got sick, I would miss training. Or I would, I would train shitty. I, I would never miss training, but I would, I would train shitty. And they'd kick me out. Like Javier would kick me out. He's kicked me out of the gym multiple times. Um, and then I would get shitty training in. Or, and then especially fight week. I was paranoid about getting sick on fight week. Because if you get sick, you could lose the fight. And yeah. you can't make an excuse after the fight. Like, oh, I was sick. You know, no, if nobody gives a shit about that. So I know that that didn't help. Being a fighter for 20 years and always being just terrified of getting sick. So it's hard for me to remember if it was before that because I grew up in Texas on like a farm and I was like shoveling shit out of horse stalls. I don't think I was that OCD. <laughs> well, I didn't yeah, eat it. Growing up. And I washed my hands. My mom made me wash my hands before food, but I don't remember being like crazy OCD. So I think, I think my OCD is almost kind of like taut, if that makes sense. What if there was like a $50 drink at a place we were at and I accidentally took a sip of yours by accident? Would you drink after me? Yeah, if we were in a bar. Would you really? Yeah. Okay. I have. Like on I purpose? Have. <laughs> like just to fuck No, with but me I just have with oh. bottles. We've shared bottles and stuff. <clears throat> but in, 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 I, I don't drink after people know. Oh, I know you don't. I mean, in, in a normal I'm situation, I wouldn't know. Cause I, and the funny thing is, is like, it, there's no reason to it. Well, I'm not gonna, if it's a $50 I'm not gonna, dollar drink to get another one. But I'm just saying there's no reason to it. Like, like I just, I, I don't know. I, I don't know. I, I purposely would rather if not I'm drink after here, somebody. But I've been with people before that I've, that I've, uh, that I've, it's, it's, I don't know. This, I, is, I getting, this is getting into a, a weird really. situation, but like I've kissed people that, that you know what I mean, that, that I just met, but then I have not drank after people <laughs> that I've known for a long time. You know? Can I go? Can I go there and say that? So it's like weird, but yeah. I, I, What's the percentage that were women that I kissed? Yeah. Oh, at least fifty percent. Oh, uh, yeah, at least. Fair enough. <laughs> um, if Summer's Eve. Or to offer you a sponsorship, but you had to wear that shit all the time. Not obviously oh. the, the feminine product. Actually have to wear their product, but their name on your shirts and shit. Would you would you let them sponsor you? And the UFC? Yeah. Yeah. Would, yeah. Really? I'd rock that shit for sure. See, I figured. Not now. I, I'm, I'm not even finding the UFC and no, have no, a six-figure contract. I so. understand. Dude. Like, I, I'm, a, I'm, I'm beyond You're that You're not going to kiss a girl either now. I'm just saying, <laughs> like, if they were to <laughs> offer you, these are all hypothetical. You know, let's be honest. Never with say each other. never. All right. No, no, but uh, you know what? I was, a, Eve is. I was the sponsor king, bro. I'm not going to get into stories here, but I, 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 I grinded. Okay, sponsors. I just didn't know if there would be something. I was a crazy would. entrepreneur, dude. I was selling candy in, in school from Sam's Club, dude. That's that's who I was. Remember when I robbed the concession stand mm -mm. in high school? Mm -mm. Got arrested at a game? Yeah, yeah, I remember that. Okay, it was a game. Yeah, it wasn't <laughs> wasn't wasn't for me. No, but I mean, there was a game going on. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And uh, I can't okay, that's another you story. Worked for me, dude. All right. <laughs> well, I was look at. I didn't really. <laughs> you were literally... okay. You were the getaway bicycler. You this. You can't say. Oh, nobody. None of that shit. I'm not asking about that. But what are you scared of? Like, it, like spiders, snakes. Like, what? If there's something that was here, right here, you'd be like, nope, nope. I'm out. I'm out. No, but there, I don't think there's anything like. Especially living in Thailand, I don't care about little things like 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 spiders and lizards and shit like that. I see that shit all the time. Or a roach on the floor, a rat. 
you see that in restaurants here. It's not little things like that don't scare me. I'm scared of things, but like I wouldn't be scared of something like that. It would be something more like uh, pregnancy, like bologna if it fell on the floor That's and then someone yeah, put yeah. it in my sandwich. I, I don't know. Let me think. So for, you're cool with a like a. A, a spider this size. I don't care about right spiders. Here. We just had one in here, and and I I nothing. <laughs> Did you get it out? I don't want to be part of that shit. <laughs> I, I hate spiders. It went back that way. Um, yeah, I don't. I, I, I'm scared of like uh, if I, if I could say I'm scared of one thing. Obviously, I'm scared of death. Because no, stop. I'm talking about like I don't want to. Of course, we're all scared of, of cancer, losing family members, finding out you're going to die in like two months, like that kind of shit. But other than that, like I'm not scared of little things. I'm, you know, I'm certified Scott. I mean, you were there for that. How, how hard did I train <laughs> before I jumped out of a yeah, plane with nobody? Listen, you don't have uh, fear of heights. I'll give you that. Yeah, uh, we went to the skydiving place. I had zero experience. I Within I, one hour, I was just jumping well, out of a plane. Because we lied. We lied. We lied. Yeah. Yeah. They, they believed us though. Because you will. Well, that's what you're scared of. Um, you were scared of dying with a man because you're supposed to jump first with a guy tandem. strapped. To, yeah, and tandem. I said, oh, I did a ton of tandem jumps. And you don't so he believes me. <laughs> For some reason, you don't want to die with a man strapped to the back nope. of you. Which is I'd rather die by myself, which unfortunately happened in my 24th jump. A guy actually did yeah. die, unfortunately, Robert Witzlet, which I'm uh, – rest in peace to him. But, um, yeah, I didn't want to die in a tandem because tandems have more accidents statistically than, than free fallers by themselves. And then you die with, in like the crotch of another man. I mean, there, I mean, I know that's crazy, but if I'm going to die, yeah, I mean, you get on your own time. I want to die. I want to hit the ground by myself. And so we went to skydiving uh, school, and I carried you, and we filmed it on YouTube. If you want to check it out, the whole entire process of that me was getting the first certified. Video we ever made together. We made a blog about it. Check that shit out. Oh, type type 20... Mike Swick skydiving, and you'll see the blog. What are we? Twenty eight. And I, I showed up to this place, and he's like, "Hey, uh, do you have any experience tandeming?" I'm like, "Oh yeah, I, I tandem all the time." And then it was like Yuri, the Russian guy, yeah. with like he had like spots on his hair. The it was like a print. cheetah, the leopard. leopard yeah. yeah, he didn't give a shit. He's like, go in this room and watch this video. It was like from the '80s. And he goes, when your uh, parachute malfunctions, which it will one day, you need to learn how to get out of the different malfunctions. And so I went in there, and you were in there, and we, we couldn't get the TV to work. And then we came out, and we're like, okay, we're good. <laughs> He goes, I said, which side is the thing or whatever? Dude, it was less than two hours, was yeah. it not? That two I was hours going from to the walking plane. in there to now jumping by yourself. Yeah, and I jumped with two other guys, but I was completely by myself, and we jumped out of the plane, and we were, like, holding hands – or they were holding my, my, my arms. And I was just thinking to myself, fuck, I'm flying. Like, I have to save my own life before I hit the ground. This is crazy. And, dude, luckily I, I pulled, and I looked up thinking, like – don't malfunction because yeah, I don't remember course, shit yeah. from that video. <laughs> it popped up perfect rectangle, and I was like, "Yes!" And then I landed like a mile away, and they had how to bring many, me back. How many total jumps you finished with? For school, it was like ten or something. I think that's all you've done your whole. No, no, no. I, I was like, like, like thirty. 20, okay, yeah, it was like twenty-four yeah. when Robert got when when Robert died, and I took a big break after that. I did a three-way with a guy um, who. Oh. Let's just pause that. There's Instagram. No, this, this, this is a sad. This is a sad guy. story, dude. We, we we jumped out three together, which I, we technically shouldn't have because I was kind of an experience. But I, I didn't. I wasn't in the. We weren't like touching, and we jumped out together, and uh, that was eerie, man. Because like that hit me hard. That's why I quit for a while because like he was. We took a photo. If you look at the YouTube video of our training, the one that we did, the blog. Y'all are he, inside the. He's on the. He's on the, his pictures on the very end of the video. Rest yeah. in peace to him. Um, we took a picture for whatever reason because I didn't know the guy that well. We just all came and jumped together, and we took a photo right before we left the plane. Left the plane, um, and we all went down and we had fun. We were smiling. Everything was good. I pulled at five thousand feet because I was inexperienced, so I pulled higher. And then, I, you know, my chute opened and I was good. And they just kept going down. It was Kevin and, and Robert. And then and then the crazy thing was they uh, they kept going. I didn't see him again until I started landing. And then when I landed, I came into the DZ and Kevin was waiting for me at the DZ. And he was like, come on, come on. You know, and I, I landed and then he gave me the high five. He's like, yeah, that was awesome. And he didn't even know. And he went with him. So he should have kind of kept an eye on yeah. him because they were both experienced and they, they pulled at the same time, which was probably around 4,000 feet. And nobody knew. This is the craziest story ever. And then, so we didn't know he died. He he apparently, because I was, obviously I had an excuse me because I, I pulled at 5,000 feet. I wasn't supposed to be looking around at other people. I was supposed to be looking around at people around me so I don't hit anyone. Um, but Kevin went down with him. And then, uh, you know, we thought he went back up. It was like his third jump of the day when he jumped with us anyway. We thought he just went back up and jumped again. We went back in, took our shoot off. We left. And they called us the next morning and they were like, uh, 
you know, did you jump with Robert? We, we heard you jumped with Robert, you and Kevin. And I was like, yeah, we jumped and uh, everything was fine. I mean, I think, I think. And they go, did you see Robert after the jump? And I was like, no, I didn't see him after the jump. But I, I mean, we were like looking at each other and they, you know, everything was fine. The whole, everything seemed perfectly normal. And they said his truck was parked there all night. He never, he never went home. His family's worried about him. Not to bring the conversation down, but yeah, long story short, Shit happens, man. It's a dangerous sport, and and he hit the ground uh, 220 miles an hour. I guess no, terminal no velocity. Shoot open, right? The chute popped open when he hit the ground. So they think what happened was because I remember when we left the plane, I was behind him. He jumped before I did, and I was behind him. And I remember he he reached back to grab the chute like, like probably 20 times. And I, I'm thinking in my head, he's OCD. You know well, what I mean? Practicing, yeah. yeah. I, remember, I remember them teaching. Because he was one of those old school guys, so he didn't have one of those things that, um, I forgot what they're called, that automatically opens With the, the meter. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So when you get to a certain height, it opens up. He's like the old school guy that's been jumping for like, you know, a thousand jumps. And he had the old school shoot that just, it won't open unless you open it, right? Yeah. Um, but he kept touching his ball. And I was just like, what the fuck is he doing? And why is he doing that? You know, he's obviously touching it every time. Everything's fine. Um and they said that he complained about arthritis in his, his elbow before. So they think what happened was is he up? jumped. And when you're standing, your shoot's down, and you can reach it. But when you're jumping, maybe it shifts up, yeah. and he couldn't reach the, uh, the shoot. Uh, and so they think that's what happened was he, he tried to get it till it was too late, and then by that time it was too close to the ground, and he hit the ground, and he was dead on uh, impact. And the crazy thing, everybody was there when he hit the ground, but nobody saw it because he was, like, off course. So yeah, the, the, the whole yeah, day, everybody's standing there watching this land, and nobody sees that he just, like, completely uh, went off course. So I assume he didn't bring a family member. And they found him the next morning, and we did, like, a memorial jump for him and everything, and then I took, oh, I took a huge break after that. Note to self, never ask you that thing again. Yeah, sorry, Jeez. man, I'm not trying to bring it down, Christ. but, like, just to give you an idea that, like, you know, My you mom see passed the, you, away you, in 2010. You, you want to talk about her? You see these guys skydiving, though, like, and, and, and you start thinking that, like, it's completely safe and, like, there's no danger at all. And, no, there is. People die, man. This guy jumped a thousand times and. Wow. It was, yeah. Well, God, I don't even know where to. Where do we where segue from that? Are uh, we done with the lightning round or? Like, I kind of like this. Maybe. Okay, so what else you got? Uh, not a lot. Just, um, I don't know. Just, I was just. Actually, a lot of the shit doesn't even make sense. It's more for me. You know, yeah. It was just going to piggyback off some of the things you said, but it's hard to, to come back from. Yeah, I know. I know. It went dark on that. But it's We could talk about your hero. Okay. Let's do it. Uh, how do we segue? I'm Should sure. we go back with the lights, or is this okay? Um, um, up to you I wouldn't mind maybe a little more of this stuff if you uh, got any. Maybe we could cut the lights on. Cut the lights on. I hear that's yeah. a Texas thing. This will stop my... Uh, is that a Texas thing? Hey, Greg, is that a Texas thing? Cut the lights off. I've never heard cut them on. Right. Is that Texas if I say cut the lights on? Maybe. You fix and go this... Oh, 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 oh. Have you heard that before? I haven't. No. Maybe that's a Texas thing. Cut the lights on. Cut the lights off. Is Apparently people don't say that. They say turn the lights on, turn the lights off. Well, but we, we can cut them on and cut them no, off. You can Usually cut, cut is off. Yeah, cut the lights means turn it off. Yeah, but you, we can cut them on in Texas. Like, we're that no, good. No, no, no we no. can't. No, yeah, buddy. You fixing to turn them on? I went to bed many times. My mom said, cut the light off. Yeah, Or off. cut the light on. Turn, turn the light on. You're going to bed? Oh, yeah, I don't yeah, think she right. said that to you. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> turn the lights on. Why is it so dark in yeah, here? Are you trying to I should have just stopped while I was ahead yeah. before I we got the last that example. Out, yeah. No problem. Um, obviously, it's no stranger to anybody who has a computer that follows you. Uh, you're a big fan of The Rock. Mm. Would you vote for him for president? Yeah, because I saw like this big speech he gave today on Instagram about uh, Black Lives Matter. And uh, he's a good speaker, man. And he's smart. Here's the thing. I would vote for The Rock 100% um, because I know he would be ready and, and able to do it. But I would think it would be a bad move on his part. But I think it would be a good move on our part if if he had the right people around him. You know those are movies, him. right? He doesn't really... I know, but Jump I'm, I'm saying car. his level of success, where he's at right now, he's so successful, he's so famous, he's so popular. I think being a president would only bring him down because he's already as popular as a president. You know what I mean? He's almost yeah. as famous as anyone, any president in the world. So it's like he doesn't gain much in fame value, 
but he's going to have a workload that's going to be crazy, stress load that's going to be crazy, and then people are going to be digging into his past, digging shit up, like trying to make him look bad. And I think it's what president hasn't taken a hit. I mean, think about it. even yeah, Obama was a great yeah. president. So many great presidents yeah. of the past. Clinton. So many presidents. There's always one event that they. But can't you control. always find out all the dirt. Yeah. So I just think it's not worth it for him. Though it would be cool to have somebody who spoke so good like The Rock, because. So well. <laughs> Because I think the president, a big part of their job is speaking and addressing the nation and making the nation feel comfortable with their decision. I don't think they make all the decisions. Obviously, they have a cabinet. They have people around them that do all these things. But they have to make the, the country feel like what they're doing is right. And they right. got to make the, com- the country feel safe and, and, and comforting and knowing well, so that he's a, he's a leader for a reason. You know, and and uh, The Rock can do that. Yeah, obviously he's an actor. Ronald Certain Reagan other was people an actor. can't do that. You know? You know? And, and that's th- what Ronald Reagan's best things was is he could communicate so well to everybody. You know, I mean, not, not, not to bash on Trump or anything, but like the – because I don't get political, but like for instance, how many times with this coronavirus or other things Trump's had to answer questions he didn't know – like anybody wouldn't know. You know yeah. what I mean? You have people that are experts in that and you bring That's why yeah, that's why the president has a cabinet or whatever and, yeah. his name is. You bring these people in that are experts. So it's like you don't have to know everything and be the best, but you definitely have to like be a good speaker and make people feel like you're in control, shit's going good. You know, you're in good hands. And I think the rock could fucking do that. I just think it would be to his own detriment. Like I think it would be just I think it would just yeah, stress him out to death. Hurt him in the long he, run. he's a hard worker and he kills it, but I think he's getting a lot more fame and Having a better life now I mean, than he might would as well as a president. I mean, fuck, let's see what else we can do. You know, I wouldn't mind doing it. It's getting to a point now where it's going down to popularity versus politics. I mean, more so like Trump was proof that like being popular and being a name can make you a president. He he didn't get there because of his political yeah, of you course. know uh, experience. Why do we get political on here? That wasn't that political, bro. I mean, if you, <laughs> the Rock if, being president. If you call that, if we talked about the Rock being president. If you call that political, then I think we're not your guys to be. There's actually a pretty good, uh, uh, what is it? Saturday Night Live skit where the Rock pretends to be president, or he's yeah. not pretend, but you know, in the skit, he's I think he's Obama. Yeah. And then when he gets mad, he becomes the the Rock Obama. Oh, nice. The Rock Obama. So he gets. How yeah, did I not see that? I mean, it's. I do love the rock. I got the rock. Yeah. Project Rock. Uh, I know you're a huge fan. Headphones behind me. God, I wish I could announce something else about the podcast. Speaking of that, but I can't. What? Speaking of people related to the rock. Oh yeah. yeah, yeah. But I don't know when that's coming I out. You. I don't know when that's coming out. So. Well, I think that just about covers it. I'm not real good at this. Um, two questions I forgot to ask her. <laughs> what do you feel about magic? Do you find it fun or terrible? Magic. Magic. Uh, I don't know. I think it's weird, man. I think it's like a cult. <laughs> what? <laughs> yeah, dude, I don't know, man. You know it's just sleight of hand. Yeah, it's not, that's what I'm really saying. Not... I think it's like a cult, and they try to make people believe that they're like magic and shit. It's weird. But like... It's not real, man. Okay, so like if you saw David Blaine doing a ridiculous trick, like Chris right here, Angel, for instance. Yeah, yeah, that kind of stuff. Like, I mean, that's he's he's out you know, of. His he doesn't head. really walk across buildings. I know. Really, okay. So it's like a cult if you believe him. That's what I'm trying to say. Like these people that are like ah oh, crying when he walks by. I mean, do you enjoy watching it or just say fuck it? I want no part of it. I was a huge fan of David Copperfield because my mom liked him. Well, yeah, we all. But did. she was also a huge fan of Dirty Dancing, and I watched that like 50 times. So I don't know if there's like credibility. My mom's a big Tom Selleck fan. You familiar with his work? Magnum, Magnum PI. PI. <laughs> that was my that was my backup plan if the fight didn't work. <laughs> <laughs> to drive Ferraris. Yes, with sir. A mustache? Yes, sir. Wow. Mm, well, I can grow a mustache. Like I can have a mustache tomorrow. Look at mine. I could shave this almost. Yeah. So um, yeah, man. Like uh. So you I, like magic? I enjoy like yeah. I mean like David David Copperfield was okay, and like I, I like seeing it sometimes. David Blaine's okay because he like really is crazy fucker that like really risks his life doing crazy shit. He'll like stay in a box for like a month, so that's pretty cool. But, like these guys that go around the street and they're like, oh, pick a card, woo, you know that kind of shit. It's like get a How real job. This, when they throw that shit like against the window and it sticks, get a real stuff, job, dude. Come it's on, it's still neat. Don't get me wrong. When I watched Transformers the night before, and there's like a fucking seven hundred foot tall autobahn or whatever fucking shooting a whatever the hell it is yes the there's a chance the road in germany changes into yeah (laughs) autobot autobot yes welcome back uh there's a chance that there might be some kind of like video editing uh oh you think so going on in the magic trick so it's a little unbelievable when you throw you know what i mean like come on bro you're telling me that a 
18 foot long Volkswagen yeah. can a sudden turn into a two story house that tall. Like, I don't know. That's just well, that's what always bothered me. It's like, make the scale. Clear. So I'm saying, yeah, if you can do that, then of course this guy can throw a fucking ace of spades at a window and make a pigeon appear. Of course. Of course. Who okay. cares, Answer though? Me this. Who cares? I mean, but I will say this. I will say this. If you because I don't want every experience. magician to hate me. I will say this. If you can bring happiness to people, and, and, and this is, you asked my opinion, I'm going to walk right by. I, I've been to so many, like Russia and all these different places where they have magicians <laughs> on the street. Oh, I'm going to walk right by. It's not going to entertain me that much unless you're doing something crazy like 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 uh, talent wise, like you're in your head spinning and doing break dance, some shit like that. That'll make me stop. Or playing an instrument or singing, magic. I'm not going to stop. But if you're making people happy, you know, so be it. And good for you. And I'm, I'm happy for you. Well, because you're doing good to the world. So happy. Well, your birthday party just got ruined. I'm canceling the magician. Yeah, cancel that <laughs> fucker, dude. <laughs> Pin the tail on the donkey is still yeah. in effect, huh? Jesus. Uh well, now you just ruined all the other questions. It was about 25 other questions about magic. Really? <laughs> no. Oh, no, that was it. There was one other I one. I know about more about Magic Johnson from this last dance TV show than I do about magic. Huh. You want me to age you in some of those questions? No, no, that's enough. Ouch. It's a Magic Johnson age joke. Yeah, I get it. Um, yeah, but the only other question that I pretty much didn't touch on was your love of ketchup, but it's not important. Well, that didn't sound like a question. No, yeah, because it was. Not worded properly. Oh, wow. But, uh, well, hey, man. You grew up and that's all you had to ask in 25 years? There's nothing else yeah, that you were curious about? It's not a 24-hour fucking continuous loop news program. We've been here an hour and a half. No, oh, is it really? Well, I got to go home for curfew. You held pretty good. Not bad. Oh, thanks. Well, we can do part two tomorrow. Mm. Well, good job, Mark. <sighs> it's so just good to be back here, man. So what's next for you? How's, let's, let's talk about real fast. I don't want to go yet. Had a couple <laughs> of drinks. Um, so how has your quarantine been? Horrible. Do you miss uh, the gym and me and the studio? Yes. And doing podcasts? And yeah. I uh, Literally in a three-day period, I lost – my girlfriend went home. Mm. You being my buddy. Mm -hmm. um, I'm no longer allowed to see you because we got cut off, you know. Uh, my job ended, and um, Greg, who lived across the hall from me, moved out all within three days. Hmm. I went from a great life to being on death row. I shit you not. Death, I'm sure that's Seriously. very similar. I had no visitors, no conjugal mm. visits. So it was worse than death row. I mean, I could go outside and, <laughs> and I could pee when I wanted to and by myself, but... And you didn't have a death date, but... but oh, shit. But yeah, it... Uh, yeah, it's been. Different. So, what are you looking forward to the most when we get? It seems like the cool thing now is it is ending. Like you hope for a resolution where it just ends, which is like, how can that happen? How can there's not a set date of when it stops, how can people yeah. just uh, go back to normal? But it is really happening. People, it's literally happening. Like there's no cure, there's no vaccine, but people say, are just yeah. quitting quarantine. Who say that? Okay, like for instance, we open July first. Yeah, the gym. Yeah, all right. And there's zero cases in Thailand. Blah blah. blah. Okay, well July eighteenth. There's 680. Are we still going to shut down again? Or are we just going to be like, ah, oh, well, fuck it. I think you it's know? ending, though. Like, I really think it's like I everything just, in the world, everyone in the world, all these countries are opening up now. They're ending the quarantine. That, that's what I'm saying. I get it. But there's still going to obviously be some. Not every single person yeah, has been course. tested, you know. And to I me, think I, you still protect the elderly and the people that are course. pre-existing conditions until this is like, you know, obviously. I just, I feel like I'm at the point where I, I just don't give a shit. Yeah. I mean, it, if, if I get it, it's going to suck and I'll lay in bed for a week. Well, you're a smoker, dude, so you're probably going to die. I'm just letting you know. Wow. I'm just giving you the hard facts. Yeah, that's right. what they said. And if you go on Do a I respirator. Do my two-week notice in if I'm dying? Or? No, no, it's okay. You, you just, go, die, just yeah. promote me again. Yeah. Hey, vice president. You get promoted to heaven. <laughs> Owner of AKA Dyland ties or ties dies. I could see you doing that shit, but but no, I yeah, uh, I know you. Yeah, you're probably all right. I, I think I, we're like okay. I said. I think we've already had it, man. You January, look, a lot of people were sick. You held your breath for at least 10, 15 seconds there in the beginning of the podcast. You were fine, bro. You, dude, you're like a champ. You could probably do a tire sprint up that hill behind AKA like you did before. That's cue, on YouTube cue the footage, too. Cue the footage right <laughs> That's now. That's on YouTube. Greg, too. can you find that? Greg could find it. Give me my seven seconds of fame going up the hill. This is f***ing stupid. Why am I doing this shit? I'm already sore. I mean, just going down. Take me the day I'm f***ing getting sick, dude. What a day. Dude, I was sick. Hope you're bitching. <laughs>
Just put over your shirt. Come on, dude. I'll walk beside you. <laughs> I'm not going all the way up, though. I can tell you that. Try, Mark. Get, for, for once, give it everything you have. Be honest. Give it everything you have. Whatever happens, happens. Obviously, you're not an athlete, but... Thanks, man. No, you made surprises, dude. Come on. Full sprint. Let's go. Let's go. This one? Yeah. yeah. Oh, hey. That's why I don't fight. <laughs> That's why I don't fight. <laughs> <laughs> I need a Deep cigarette. Oh god. You you did you, you went dude, you it was when I was doing entire runs up a hill, dragging a tire for my camp, my last fight camp. And you went all the way up the hill and stopped like eight feet. Because I didn't that's know like, the... that's like That's like landing like four inches from the hole. And, and no, no, that's like, that's like landing eight feet from the hole and, and golden tee and not getting the, oh, the GSP points. It wasn't like they were designated lines. We were going off cuts in the well, concrete. Yeah, but there was one like every four feet and yeah, you just okay. chose the closest I did one. one. You did 600, not that day. You did six that day. But yeah. that day, you know, I don't know where to go. I don't do it. I don't care. Man. But I still beat your time, and that's got to bother you. You didn't think beat that's my what, time. Why was you bringing you it up? You can't stop halfway and then beat my time. Even beating, even stopping. I was just fucking with you. It's like when um, uh, Hussein Bolt, whatever, Usain Bolt, was about to finish, and he's just like, obviously dude, that slows you down. There's not many people that can outrun like me, dude, at my, especially at my age. All these young kids at AK, <sighs> I still outrun those guys. I'll drink to that. Come on, bro. Who are you talking to? Who are you talking to? You seen me train five years ago, like Michael Jordan. I don't ask anybody to do anything that I can't do myself. You do that. I will give you that. I do, dude. I do, man. But you know what the issue is? There's a lot of watered down fighters out there. That's a problem. There's I'm some... talking about the workers, everybody. I mean, you no, can still yeah. the work ethic on people that I've never really been part of. Yeah. I mean, that's... But you have to, man. You I don't get respect that. from people. So when I quit here and go become a towel boy, yeah. how much did towel 58, boys make? 58,000. 58,000 NBA. Just to go to... two, You work two hours, mm -hmm. 42 days a year, because mm -hmm. there's 84... I mean, I'm sorry, 41 days a year, because there's 84, <laughs> 82 games. <laughs> No, these are starting to catch me. My yeah, math, I can you tell. Know, when my math goes down. Yeah, when you, start lose, when you start jumbling numbers. The point dude, being is there's 82 games in a season, 41 at home. If you can give me 58 grand to give a few guys some towels for two hours during those 41 games, we're looking at, uh, what is that, $1,800 a game? I mean, you could still answer yeah. messages and make more money, dude. Oh, I still will. I'll yeah. always answer messages. Yeah, so boom. I done. can't. These people just, you know, they would message me like, oh, shit, man, I haven't heard from you. You all right? What, so when people message J.K. Thailand, what is the most common, ridiculous message that we get? Where you're just like, oh, like, <sighs> that happens a lot. Because I've seen them. So I, I look in every once in a while. So I see these, uh, uh, aside from the people asking for money and free membership. Oh, well. Let me, can I train at your gym? I have no I, money. I get, we yeah. get those all the time. Yeah, I mean, besides the, I want to train for free. Yeah, Who that's 90%. You know? Is that on our website where we can train for free? No. I, just, I don't know why people Everybody thinks that. they can do it. Oh. Um, everybody wants a discount. Nobody's ever messaged me saying, look, it's $1,000 for this. Can I give you 1200 It's never that. It's, it's always, never happened? Can really? Can I have it for 800 That's so weird. It's weird. That never happens. Huh. And then, um, but I will say, and it's so weird, and maybe I'm just old school um, with any sport, but I always get to, if I start May 3rd, how long before I get in the UFC? Yeah, I've mm -hmm. seen those questions. And, you know, you want to be positive. You know, you want to help them out because generally they're probably 18 to 22 years old, kind of stupid would be my guess. But it's, it's like, I mean, that's like saying if I'm dribbling a basketball, hey, when can I be in the NBA? Obviously, I don't dribble like that. Just like, yeah, it's kind of hard to, you yeah. know, at this table. But, I mean, it, it's literally that ridiculous. That's how you question. wave when you're like a beauty pageant. No, beauty pageants. Oh, yeah, that's right. You're fired. That's how Trump fires people. You're fired. You're fired. <laughs> you're fired. 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 <laughs> wow. I thought this ended already. What are we doing? Uh, <laughs> curfew take me away. I don't want to be part of this anymore. Oh, dude, I'm going to make you late for curfew so you get arrested for the second time in Thailand. Second? Third. There you go. Yeah. Oh, boy. <laughs>
God, how do you still work in my gym? Because I'm the best at what I do. Yeah. Deal with you. Yeah, yeah, true. I'm not easy to work for. He's shaking his head, isn't he? He's, he walked out. Oh, did he? He's, <laughs> He's gone, gone already? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All uh, right. Well, we'll wrap well, it up. Well, it was good, man. Again, thanks for having me back on. I really miss doing this, man. And then, like I said, how I like was it? How up. was it watching me do all these podcasts? It was tough, you? man, because I'm a huge uh, Forrest Dude, Griffin fan. Did I not get huge. the best guess while you were gone? Yeah, when you're with me, we get like fucking, uh, you know, yeah. David Castaneda. You know, no, I love him. I'm just fucking, I just <laughs> He's going to gonna kill you for yeah, that, I know dude. He is. I know he is. He's on a hit show on love Netflix, David. dude. Jesus Christ. I just t- literally talked to him two nights ago. No, but I, I mean, but it does, it, it's tough because I always wanted to ask all your, literally all your guests questions, you know, like the brain of Vera. I sat behind him during one of your fights, or not him, but his family. Mm. And they were so, we were jumping, you know, because whenever UFC you UFC 60. I know. I already know UFC 60. He beat, he beat Asura Silva with the guillotine choke. No. Yeah, it was. Buddy, we fought the same night. I fought Briggs. He fought a Sil- Silva. It's when you fought the UFC on Fox 4. August 2nd, oh, 2000. We've got to bring up my... You won. Oh, okay. It's when you yeah, beat yeah. fucking... Who did he fight that night? He fought like Shogun. So we fought three cards together. Yeah, that's why I, I forgot about. I forgot him. about that card. I, I remember the one in England when he fought Couture and the one when, when he fought Silva and UFC 60, I think it was. Yeah. And, and I fought Joe Riggs. Let's see, that's the kind of shit. Like, I wish that... That's right. He did fight UFC yeah. on Fox 4. Okay. And then, um, like I said, because... You know, we, we were in the friends and family section, you know, and they had, he had 40 people there, you know, he was headlining. And then you had a, me and one other person. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I like text your mom the results. I was like, hey, by the way, Mike fought tonight. Yeah, friend and, cared. friend and fam. Friend and, <laughs> and plus one. <laughs> friend and plus one. Dan had to give me, Dan yeah, only had to give me two tickets for every but fight. But it was cool because, like I said, we jumped on top of each Like, they were, because you fought before him, you know. Yeah, yeah. we were shooting the shit, you know. I'm like, yeah, because we're wearing my I always shirts. fight before him for some reason, yeah. Well, he's a bigger draw. But, I mean, um, but yeah, like I said, you know, we, so we get along great. But that one, and I, I really wish I would have had some uh, some time with Forrest Griffin because I always, I've hung out with him before. Yeah, we, you, we partied with him in Vegas. Um, the, uh, I'm just going to go down your list of the last one. But, like, I just miss them all, man. Like, There's, it was a good line. I really, that. Uh, we got some man, good ones Cub coming Cub Swanson. Cub God, Swanson. Is there a better guy ever on he's the planet? He's a nice guy, man. He's really cool. Yeah. So yeah, man. It's. I mean, I'm. Then Benson's proud a great to see, guy it hurts too. Me watching it, you know. And Brandon Vera. Uh, by the time you yeah. see this, you'll have seen his episode. That was one of my favorite. Brandon Vera is a great guy. You so know, JJ Soria always fun to talk. JJ is awesome, and JJ just got a. Uh, oh, we didn't talk about it on the episode season two. No, because no. it happened afterwards. Yeah. So so he predicted on on our uh, podcast that he was going to get genified episode or season two, and they did. Netflix signed him for season two, so he's now he's an also a, a Netflix star. Yeah. So we got David Castaneda. We oh, got yeah. JJ. S- Sorry, we got Getting all these Netflix famous actors up, huh? too, dude. Yeah. All right, cool. We'll wrap it up, man. So uh, let's do this. Anything cool. else before we go? I'm gonna thank our sponsor, buddy. You're doing a shitty job. You got to thank our sponsor at some point. Oh, oh, now I get to talk again. This is your podcast. I'm the guest. Hey, I what really do you like do? Thank AKA Thailand. I gotta go. Starfish concept. Uh, Mark Bogutsky. Nudityimages.net. Is mm-hmm. that not one? No, man, I'm, I, buddy, I'm not good at this. This is your thing. This is why I just sit here and make jokes and have a beer. So you, so, we, so we'll do the the we'll do our thing. We'll thank our sponsor after because there's nobody that is not watching still. We'll be good. <laughs> I'll good. drink to that. That's our douchey comment of the day. You're still watching if you if you started watching this thing. So we didn't lose you yet. Yeah. So we'll roll that beautiful footage now of AK Thailand, our sponsor, the world's premier luxury training resort here in Phuket, Thailand, the place that we both work, the place we both dedicated our lives to come and build. And uh, and I'm in it for about a second and a half, so enjoy. Yeah, see if you can find Mark. If you find Mark and, and make a comment in the YouTube video, we'll <laughs> give you a free T-shirt when you come. There we go. <laughs> Great. <laughs> What's up, everybody? I am here in Thailand. This is the first time I've ever been here. Been dying to come here for years. The great Mike Swick. He's one of the big reasons he's been trying to pull me down here. What he built down here, AKA Thailand, is incredible. There's people here from all over the world. You can train mixed martial arts here, jujitsu. They have weightlifting, they have cardio, and obviously they have Muay Thai, boxing, everything. I'm 
telling you guys, I know everybody wants to go to Thailand because Thailand's so cool, but you can't come to Thailand without coming to AKA Thailand. Come on. All right, guys, thanks for watching. And uh, yeah, hopefully this came out okay. And you got to know me a little bit better than that guy that fought on Ultimate Fighter Season 1 and then a few fights in the UFC. Did we bring that up? Did you fight on that? <laughs> yeah, at some point. I can't remember. It's good stuff. All right. All right man. Welcome back. And uh, stay tuned for more great podcasts. We got some really good guests coming up. And uh, this is the last time I'm drinking for a long time, so don't worry. <laughs>